Welcome back everyone to our online program and we've been talking about imperfection and the struggle a lot of people have in early recovery with accepting they're actually, like the rest of us, imperfect. And in our last episode we talked about this idea of embracing imperfection as part of recovery, as part of what makes us human beings. And there are great benefits to this. So. For example, one benefit is that you can look at yourself in a mirror without cringing if you accept that everybody is imperfect. Right? It's this idea that, you know, a lot of people in early recovery have a tough time looking at themselves. But if you can, if you can truly accept that people are imperfect, then the person looking back at you is just one more human being, right? And I know some people use this tactic, uh, you know, they look in, they're told to look into the mirror and say, you know, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like me. I'm not a big fan of that at all. Because if you accept you're imperfect, what you can actually say is, well, you know, I may not like what I'm looking at right now, but I have faith that I will in the future. Which, by the way, is a much better tactic psychologically to feel better about yourself. Because if you don't really believe you're good enough, smart enough, and people like you, then it's the first one isn't really going to work. But it's this idea, if you can truly accept that you're imperfect, then it's a lot easier to look at yourself in the mirror. It's also a lot easier to look at people. Probably one of the toughest ones of people, uh, idea of uh, things that people in, in early recovery struggle with is the concept of forgiveness. Forgiving someone who has hurt you deeply, right? And again, if you can accept the idea that people are imperfect, then it's a lot easier to find it in your heart to forgive somebody. Or as one of the expert psychologists in the field said, it's actually giving up your right to be angry in for a higher purpose. <clears throat> and I knew <clears throat> One of the people I knew over the years was a nun, and she, she actually had been raped by this guy. And she told me it took her 10 years to learn how to forgive the guy who raped her. And I asked her how she did that, or even bothered why she did that. And she talked about how important it was to her to forgive. And, uh, and her main tactic she used in this is imperfection, that in her, in her view, all people were sinners, right? In our language, we'd say all people were imperfect. But at any rate, it, it, was, it was quite interesting, right? Or how do you explain, uh, we've talked about this one before, the parents of um, uh, uh, Danny Schneider, when Danny Heatley, when they were teammates for the Nashville Predators, and he got in a car and was not a very good car driver, and it got into an accident, and uh, his, his uh, uh, teammate died. And... Snyder's parents came on television and they said they held no grudge against Danny Heatley, right? That they, they forgave him. How, how can you do that? Well, it's by understanding everybody's imperfect, right? This is really the key. So some good benefits. One, it's a lot easier to look at yourself in a mirror. And two, it's, it's really a key piece to learning how to forgive someone who's hurt you. At any rate, that's uh, this uh, program on imperfection, and we'll be back uh, next time with a new topic.